Welcome back to writing a screenplay. We've done segment one. It's time to write segment two, which is blind date. So we're going to transition from segment one to segment two and just keep this train rolling. I don't know if I'm going to be able to write the whole segment in one day like I was able to do with Invasion. Um, so this might jump cut a lot. You might see me wearing three or four different shirts or whatever. Um, this might this might take a few days. Um, but we're writing, and that's what's important. So let's get right to it. Writer Duet version 5 is here. Yeah, you're pushing it. We know you're pushing it real hard. I'm, I'm always afraid to update something like that, especially during the middle of a, middle of a project. So segment one ends with... Jill uh, coming back to life, covered in blood. Her eyes no longer blue. See, such a small detail. Like, she's got blue eyes. It's like, all right. I mean, we do have to describe these characters, but uh, what does it matter? Well, because now we have that contrast. Now we have that, you know, before and after picture. Then she was that blue-eyed little cutie, and now she's that red-eyed demon. Love it. So, she snarls, leaps up. At uh, this to the hunter, and and kills him, and that's going to take us to segment two. Now we're not going to do, you know, blind date. You know, we're not going to do stuff like that. We're just going to go narrative style. So, um, I believe the name of the restaurant was Benino's Italian. Don't tell me don't tell me I spelled my fictional restaurant wrong. Restaurant. I almost want to put same night. Mm. <sighs> but I won't, but I won't. Because I'm gonna get that out of the way real quick. The fancy Italian joint. No 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 no. The pricey. Is that how you spell pricey? Is there an E in there? There's an E in there. Sometimes, sometimes they slip that E in there. Uh, the pricey Italian joint is packed, I guess. It is packed. Um, I don't have a, do I have a name for Jill's parents? Let me do a quick check. You can't see this, but I'm checking. I'm checking. No, I have Angela, Eric. No, no, I don't have that. See, this is, see, you can, you can do notes and outline and character bios till you till your your fingers are just bloody, but you're gonna you're gonna forget some stuff. Um, at the end of the day, this isn't super important, so they're going to be Jake and Francine eat their dessert. While pretending mm, mm, no 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 I know I know what we'll do I know what we'll do I'm just gonna move them down for a second because I want to remember those names there's packed um, servers are earning their tips tonight because they are flying table to table keeping everyone fat and hungry now why am I focusing on the servers because we're about to I, I want to introduce this um, with the waiter um, and his name I thought I had a name for him didn't I have a name for him let's see if I have a name for him Doo -doo -boo -boo -boo. I don't have it all right see hmm Let's give him a name. What's what's the name? See, this, is, this is where I pick a name for just like people I don't like. Uh, I don't I don't like a lot of Ians. Ian. No, but this guy might actually be end up being kind of cool. So I don't want to. I want to give Ian that rub. I don't want to give these Ians that rub. Let's go with. Mm -hmm. 
I'm just looking at my keyboard, looking at the letters, seeing if anything wants 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 to pop off. Um, let's go with. <sighs> Let's go with Nile. Nile. Um, carries a tray of desserts. What, what what's a good dessert? Tray of Nile. Tray of desserts. Avoiding. Drunk customers looking for the bathroom. Now carries a tray of desserts. So drunk customers look for the bathroom. He moves. Mm. I don't think that's how you would spell that anyway. Thank God for fucking auto. Ah, spell check. He moves. He moves, he moves. Nice couple in their forties. A table of table with a ends up at his table. Let's just do that. At his table. The tall man. I want him to be tall. Thing. How many bottles of wine are people supposed to drink? I don't know. I don't know. Um, what you're seeing right now, this is this is writing. This is writing. This line by line, a lot of times word by word, and you just ka chunk, ka chunk, ka chunk, and it adds up. We did that last. We did that last video. One page, two page, boom, seven, just like that, just like that. Um, this is. This has a a bit more uh, moving parts you know the longer this goes the more there's going to be to remember to juggle so there's going to be uh, some of these moments where I'm just like huh but that's the game that's the job so third bottle of wine so now we can go with these two um bottle of wine server the pale server see we're just slowly describing him we're not just expo dumping him his name is Nile and he's tall and he's pale and he's got sharp nails maybe one of them's a coke nail and he's got a stain on his knee it's like all right we're just we're easing into it. we're telling our story it's kind of dropping it in there we're we were building the scene of this Italian restaurant because this isn't even about these two characters at the table. This isn't about Niall yet. Niall might come back. He might be the killer in Danger Things. I haven't decided yet. Um, so, I mean, we're, we're, we're just setting the scene. Little, little descriptors. Okay, moving on, moving on. The pill server. Um, deliver. No, I used the word deliver already, didn't I? Um, 
place is two small plates with cake on them with places two pieces of gourmet because that's a that's a that's fancy gourmet I had to come on am I gonna have to look and see what what fancy cakes are what are fancy fancy oh my god I'm using Bing right now you can't see me but I'm using Bing right now because I need right to do what to stay up fancy desserts oh it's oh Bing oh Oof. Oof, this is rough a fancy dessert um, apple turnovers chocolate lava 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 marble cake biscotti biscotti truffle cookies Italian cream a lot of let's just should I just go with cheesecake I like cheesecake I just the pail server places two of gourmet they don't make gourmet cheesecake though do they white chocolate cheesecake gourmet there we go gourmet white chocolate cheesecake just just to let you know you can't be like hey he brings them some cheesecake no this this is Benino's Italian restaurant okay they will serve you gourmet white chocolate cheesecake uh, places to places uh, in front of the cheery couple. His name is Niall. Um, dessert. Courtesy of Benino's. Once again, congratulations um, on your 20 year anniversary. I almost always spell this. What what am I spelling wrong with you? Oh, it's an A. It's an A right there. And stop telling me this is right. Add the dictionary. Beninos. Beninos. Damn it. <laughs> Son of a gun. There we go. I just don't like the red squiggly when I know it's right. So, all right. I'm going to keep working on this. I will come back at the end. What's going to happen is everything that we talked about when we set this up. They're going to talk. We're going to we're, we're just about to learn that this is uh Jill's parents celebrating their anniversary. Um we're gonna meet Angela, who's nervous and she's waiting for her blind date Eric. She's gonna she's gonna be shooting the breeze with Niall here. And Eric will come. Banter, chemistry, they're gonna go back to her place, things get weird. Uh, ex boyfriend in the basement. Um, so I'm gonna do that. I will see you guys in, in a few seconds here and we'll go over segment number two. Blind date? I don't know why I winked, but I did.
Okay, we are done with segment number two, blind date, in the books, but we do have an issue. I believe blind date was supposed to be 10 to 12 pages. That's what my notes say. And it's 20 pages. We are on page 27 already. That's a, it's a good problem to have. It's a good problem to have. Um, it's better to have too much than not enough because we can always cut things and truncate things and make it nice, tight, and lean. But boy, oh boy, did I did I overshoot it. And I had a feeling that might happen because Blind Date specifically is dialogue heavy because there's, you know, the banter and the chemistry and the, the meat cute and the cute meats and all that stuff. And yeah, so it, it kind of exploded on me. So 10 to 12 pages turned into 20 pages real, real quick. Now the issue is if this continues to happen, this is going to be a really long script. This is going to be a really long script, and I uh, don't want that. But if it happens, we'll deal with that in rewriting. Because I like to aim for 100, 110 pages. And Act 1 is generally around 25 pages then. And if this was the end of Act 1, we'd be fine. We'd be perfect. But we're not done with Act 1 yet. We're still in Act 1. We still have another segment in Act 1. We still like the next one is the good boy, the dog. So, and I don't even know what I have that estimated at. Uh, that's supposed to be five to six pages. Good luck, Dale. Good luck. Uh, if I can keep to that, like I kept with it in Invasion, I nailed that estimation. Um, if I can keep to that, that means we we'd hit, you know, thirty-five pages. Uh, for Act 1, we'd be fine. But that's enough about worrying about page length. Let's go over this segment. Let's go over Blind Date, which was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Now, I believe where we last left off before the little quick speed montage was, man, just this is long, isn't it? Was Jill's parents. And they are having dessert to 20 years. I don't remember exactly where we left off. But they're having dessert, um, you know, to 20 years. They have some cheesecake. And this is where we learn that they're uh, Jill's parents. I don't know if we got to this. Should we bring some back for Jill? Um, you know, she's grounded. Grounded girls don't get cheesecake. Are we being a little harsh? She didn't, she didn't mean to, you know. And she has to control herself, Francine. It was one time. One time that we know about. Um, I keep tabs on missing people. I'm pretty sure it was just this one time. So the mom's trying to, you know, honey, we're being a little too rough on Jill. We're not saying she's a killer or in a monster and that she's, you know, she's grounded for essentially, you know, mauling someone to death, but it's implied. And which is probably what you should do in a situation like this. Um, but, you know, they're talking about it and we, we get a little more blatant with it. Um, unless she's out there killing folks who don't get reported about. Jill's smart. So they're just talking about her daughter. Um, and, but Jake's very, you know, he doesn't like it. He doesn't like what she's doing. You know, just don't think she's going to be able to control herself this young. It takes time. I was close to 150 before I could truly restrain myself. Once I learned how to pick my spots, whew, it was a game changer. So now, they're monsters too. We get it. 150 years. Whoa. How old are they? You know, we, uh, we're not spelling out what kind of monsters they are and, and all that, but we're dropping just enough to make them mysterious and to get the point across. Um, and I, I like this line. Let me know what you think of this one where Francine, the, the mom, says to her husband, um, they almost got the name right, too. I wish they would have, though. <laughs> Jake the Ripper. <laughs> so we're implying that Jill's dad is Jack the Ripper. Um and that they were really close to nailing his name. Um, although I don't know if Jake was a name in that time. Mm, Jacob, maybe. See, this might be a line that I, I uh, I'm going to put this in my notes right now. Actually, this is 
This is how rewriting begins. Rewriting begins now. You don't actually get into it. Sometimes you do. I do quite often. But this is one I'll definitely worry about later. Jack the Ripper. You can't see this, but I'm on. I'm in my board document. Jack the Ripper. Jake. Was that a name? Do research. Back. Back to this. Back to this. So the other parents do that. We meet Nile, the waiter. And he does some really good stuff. He's vanishing in in and out, you know. He's got this very mysterious quality to him, um, which is which I think is fun. Um, and then we transition. You know, Jake stabs into his cheesecake right after the Jack the Ripper reveals. So, ah, so that's you know, the server you know sees they're in the middle of their food. So, uh, so we follow Niall now, and he, he approaches uh, meek redhead with thick framed glasses, Angela. Because this story is all about Angela and Eric, who are having their blind date, and they end up going back to her place, and things get crazy. Um, so a lot of this is just a little expo, seeing what Angela's about. She's kind of shy and timid, and she seems like a very sweet girl. And Niall, um, they actually come up with a, l a little... Um, let, let's just read some. Let's let's just read some of this, because um, they're having some nice back and forth. And if you ever want to read this, uh, just slow down the video when I when I'm doing the the fast forward montage gimmick, and you can pretty much read it. But um, what am I trying to say here? Oh yeah, I like I like, I like this part because Niall's just trying to put her at ease. Like he looks nice, you know, he's dressed well for the occasion. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, if you require an out during your dinner, simply inquire about the key lime pie. Is that a thing? I'll have to research that, too. Um, I will return letting you know you have an urgent phone call. So he does, we're, even Niall, the, the, the waiter, the server, he's a bit, He's he's got some personality. He's seems like a nice guy. Um, and then Eric shows up to the blind date a little late, a little late. We drop the fact that he has that eye issue where he only sees in shades of gray. Um, we don't explain it just yet, but um, we establish that they know a bit about each other, yet this is definitely like a first date situation. And we talk about um, like a dating app here a, a little bit. Um, so some banter, some chemistry. You know, they're, they're a, a, a lot of that because we do have to establish that. You know, they start talking about their exes. She starts talking about her ex a little bit more uh, later, you know. And, you know, we, we learn their deal. We, we see them. We actually root for them. I think uh, I think if you slow it down and read it, I think we do a good job with it. Um, Eric's got a, a fucked up story. Um, she's got a messed up story. So these two are, you know, going through some stuff. And it seems like they, they found some someone else. Um which is nice and there she is talking about her ex again and then they start talking about other stuff yeah yeah chef boy d joke beefaroni is that how you spell beefaroni apparently not why is beefaroni in the dictionary writer duet that's nuts that's crazy i have to confirm that it is beef a roni Beef a roni. I'm binging it, folks. Beef a roni. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. So yeah, they make jokes, you know, banter, chemistry, um, and then we learn more about his, uh, his vision. And Eric's vision is 2020. It's just as if his eyes have a grayscale filter. Um, I don't flat out say in the description from this point on we see it in gray but i do mention stuff like that from time to time almost as a reminder oh yeah this guy's vision is like that this is how he's seeing it especially when they get back to her house which hopefully is soon gosh we're on page 17 already so he explains it real quick eric looks around the restaurant and takes in all the black and white decor so that's my that's my message to the director and folks that this shot right here point of view show it in black and white do do the gimmick this is the gimmick um, but I, I don't say from this point forward do it this way I just 
if they want to go back to it, maybe. It would be hard to do once we get to her place, because we'll uh, we'll, we, you guys know the twist already. We've done the, the notes for this. So later on, you know, it's dessert time, and they're laughing and having a good time. And, you know, he, the server asked about dessert. You want, you want some dessert? You know, key lime pie? And she's like, no, no, I'm having a good time. Um, and Eric's kind of bummed out about that, seems a bit disappointed. And she says, what's wrong? Oh, I kind of want a dessert. You know, you, you shut down dessert so quickly. Because you know? he obviously doesn't know about her escape plan. Um, and she says, we can always go back to my place. I have ice cream and declares. Wow, and declares? Marry me. Okay, so this is where Angela starts to get a little clingy, like a little bit much, and it it only it only gets worse. Um, but they do go back to her place. Uh, Angela unlo unlocks the door and brings Eric, and this is it, the little place I call home. Eric walks in, hangs up his coat, and looks around a bit. It's your standard living room: couch, TV, bookshelves. The walls contain a few paintings hung up, and and the walls themselves have a unique speckled and splashy paint design on them. Wink. Angela is very interested in how Eric responds to the walls. Neat walls. You do this yourself? I did. The relieved woman turns on a streaming music channel on her television. So, obviously the twist is that's blood. And he can't see blood because he sees in shades of gray. So it just looks like gray. Um, he does not know. It's that. That's why she's very interested in how he responds to the walls. Um... And then they continue. She go, She goes to get the ice cream, and you know he makes checks. He's got a condom, and you know he's nervous. To kind of walking around a bit. Um, while walking back to the couch, Eric sees some of the paint used on the walls is also on some of the carpet as well. So so there's some paint on the carpet as well. Before we can inspect it too closely, Angela returns with two bowls of ice cream. I hope you like Rocky Road, which is kind of funny because he's about to have a bit of a rocky road. Um, there are a couple lines like that. They're just kind of cute, and you, you laugh at it a bit more the second watch, the second viewing. Um, he takes his bowl and sees there are two scoops, but also in the bowl is a mini eclair. Um, just, just, a little, just a little fun thing. They, they already have a thing. You know, a little couple thing. Remember that? Remember you liked the eclair so much and you, you wanted eclair and then I gave you an eclair? Um, and this is where she starts to get real bad. You're not, you're a nice guy, Eric. You know, do, do, do you want to stay here? And, you know, he's, oh, shit, okay, maybe. I'm open to that, you yeah. um, know. Why don't we finish this ice cream and maybe after you could show me your, your bedroom if they're... If these are the paintings and figurines you have out here, I can only imagine what's in there. Uh, definitely. And she begins scarfing down her ice cream at an uncomfortable rate. So it's it's it almost seems like she wants to bang. Like, okay, we'll go to the bedroom after we're done eating. No, 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 no. But she just, like, she's getting weird, you know. She's getting a little bit bit strange. And he sees that. He's like, oh, she, I guess she wants bedroom time. Uh, or we can just go to the bedroom now. Yeah. And she, of course, says even better. So... Angela takes his hand and leads him out of the living room, down the hall, past the basement and bathroom doors, and into her bedroom. Now, this is just a bit of business, because the basement and the basement door are going to play a part here, so I'm just letting people, like, the logistics of it. Interior Angela's bedroom continuous. She turns on the light, and much to his surprise, her room is incredibly basic. A bad dresser, a nightstand with a small lamp on it. It's very minimalistic. Um, when he turns back, Angela, um, she already has her blouse off and is working on her pants. Even for Eric, a single guy trying to meet someone and have some fun while doing it, this is a bit fast. I was about to ask if you were comfortable with all this, but it seems you certainly are. She, uh, she barely takes it as words, yes. Yes. <laughs> Strange. Um, despite the, the strangeness of it all, he can't deny her amazing body. You are absolutely beautiful, Angela. I want you, Eric. Um, she does. She does. Um, Eric takes his shirt off. I want you to. No, you, you don't get it. I, I must have you. Um, she has tears in her eyes, but they aren't the tears of someone sad or heartbroken, trying to fix their problems with a quick rebound. These tears and a weird smile on her face are hard to place, and Eric decides to call it. 
Yeah, buckles back up. Maybe another time, I think. I've, I've got a little lactose situation brewing. Damn rocky road. That's my fault. I should have said something. Angela looks beyond offended as he puts his shirt back on while she stands there in her bra and panties. Um, you're, you're leaving? Uh, but it's nothing you did, which means it's something I, I did. Um, her voice gets louder, her tone harsher. Then, like a flip of a switch, she returns to her meek, quiet self. Maybe another time, then. Uh, with her seemingly calmed down, Eric continues his polite exit strategy. I hope so. Deep down, he's probably done with all this, but, you know, you just want a clean break. You say all the nice things that you gotta say. Um, let me let me see you out, at least. Please do. I might get lost. Eric turns and steps out of the bedroom and takes a few steps into the to the house. See, this is I've used these two words uh, too close to each other. I hate that. Um, so that's something that I will work on in rewriting that right now. Um, so he steps into the hall while Angela stays behind, reaches into her nightstand, and pulls something out. That's not even a joke. Before GPS became a staple in, the, in every phone, I would get lost everywhere. Even MapQuest couldn't help me. One time, I went... <laughs> Angela hits Eric in the back of the head with a hammer. He hits the ground hard, ba barely remaining conscious. He turns on his back and looks up at the wall. He sees his blood splattered on the... See? Once again, back backwards. Uh, blood splattered on the wall, and it looks just like the design on the living room walls. Fucking Christ, three walls in like two sentences. That'll get cleaned up. Oh, God. Oh, God. See, now he's figuring it out. He's figuring it out. Oh, those weren't designs. That wasn't a cool, goofy pattern. That was blood. Ah... Uh... I think it could play. I think that could play. Uh, she takes another overhand swing. He lifts his legs up to block the attack, but that only causes his knee to take the brunt of the hit. Uh, I must have you, Eric. He tries to get to his feet, but between his concussion and possibly broken knee, it doesn't work out for him. He crawls down the hall while trying to get up on his good leg. He uses the basement doorknob to pull himself up again, but his weight ends up opening the door. He almost falls down the stairs. As he looks down the staircase, he sees each step is covered in what can only be blood. Eric turns to avoid this room, but it's too late. Angela hits him right in the chest with the hammer, and he crumples down the stairs, hitting his head on the railing multiple times before he reaches the bottom. Uh, Angela stands at the top of the staircase, the upstairs lights uh, silhouetting the maniacal woman. Eric, are, are, are you hurt? Um, he's on his back, linking up the beams of the basement. When he looks down at his chest, he sees a section significantly collapsed. I don't know if that's medical. If that's a medical thing, I love the image of it, but I don't. I don't, I don't know. Um, call call an ambulance. <laughs> uh, I can't do that, Eric. They'd find Gabe. Eric hears the jingling of chains in the back of the basement. He struggles to turn his head, but manages. What he sees is Angel's ex-boyfriend, Gabe, his legs shackled and chained to the wall. He has enough slack to move around a bit, but is too afraid to leave his corner. Um, the once muscular man, which we established earlier, I didn't forget him, um, is gaunt and pale. Gabe sits crouched, his arms wrapped around his knees, terrified. I'll get the first aid kit. She's crazy. She's crazy. Angela's form disappears from the top of the staircase. Eric, Eric drags himself to Angela's workbench, um, which is something I have to establish. Angela's workbench needs to be established. The basement in general kind of needs some, some setup. That's fine. The only thing that could work as a weapon is a screwdriver, and he grabs it immediately. He also sees the keys to Gabe's shackle on the bench, a place just out of the poor guy's reach. Oh, so cruel. Eric grabs the keys and limps over to Gabe, and where he says, No, she's going to kill us. Eric says nothing. He drops to a knee to unlock Gabe's ankle shackle. No, 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 no. We're getting out of here. Can you walk? Fight? He nods. Eric unlocks a shackle, and Gabe is free after being down here for the Lord knows how long. She can't take on both of us. Eric turns uh, towards the stairs when Gabe wraps his chain around Eric's throat. What are you doing? Uh, babe, he's trying to leave. Gabe still has some strength in his slim arms and chokes Eric with ease. He wanted to hurt you. Eric collapses to the ground. Gabe leans in and whispers in his ear, This is, this is the way it had to be, man. Uh, Angela appears at the top of the stairs uh, again. A Eric? I stopped him. He had a screwdriver. He was going to hurt you, sweetie. Is he dead? Yeah, I did it for you. Uh, everything I do is for you. Um, let's go with maybe. Gabe is too scared to answer that, honestly. 
to answer no, to answer that incorrectly. So he doesn't answer her at all. I did it for you. Everything I do is for you. Look, Gabe, his mind beyond broken, returns to his chains where he shackles himself back in. He throws the key to the opposite side of the basement out of reach. See, you can trust me. You fixed me, Angela. You truly did. Uh, Swooning. Okay. Uh, if, I, if I get out of these chains, it's because you want me to. I just hope that day is today. It, is it? Is it today? Angela descends stairs. I think it is, Gabe. Gabe struggles to hold back his joy. I was, I was wrong about him, Gabe. Um, she sees that he's Eric is still breathing. Eric is still alive, um, and she tells Gabe to, to help me. Where they uh, get some chain, they throw it over the beam. Uh, she locks one end to the wall while Gabe secures Eric with the other end, and Eric dangles in his new chain straight jacket. <laughs> while Angela goes to a large toolbox next to her workbench, opens up a drawer where she reveals dozens of sick tools that can only be used to hurt and torture the human body. He was going to hurt me. Yeah, he, he said so. Why, why are men's first instinct to hurt the woman? It's only fair I hurt him back, right, Gabe? He deserves it. And Gabe? Yeah, honey? You hurt me too. What color Gabe had in his face fades. I guess it's time to be single for a while. Gabe bursts into tears. So she is going to uh, torture and kill these guys. She's done with Gabe. Eric didn't pan out how she wanted. I, th I think this is a good one. I think this is a good one. It's long. Things really get fun and business picks up when they get back to her house. The restaurant stuff is a little long probably, but it needs it's, some of it is, is a necessity. I can probably lose a page or two tops if I really work at that in the rewriting uh, portion later on. But this was good. This is good. I like it. I like it. I, in the notes, she has a taser, and I went away from some of the notes, um, which you might know, because we switched that together. We're documenting the whole thing. And I like it. This is Blind Date. I think it's cool. It's just a little long. Um, scary stuff. I like the ending. It was tricky getting them in position and getting him in the basement. I like the hammer stuff. Um... Yeah, not bad. If you have any notes, if you have any comments, please uh, post those below. Like I said, the next segment and the next video is going to be the good boy with the talking dog, which is going to pick up right at the end of this. Um, and that's going to be fun. That, Like I said, that's only supposed to be, what did I say, five, seven, five, seven pages? Yeah, five, six pages. <sighs> It'd have to be a bit of a speed run. So it's probably going to be closer to 10. Whew, Act 137 pages. Am I, am I going to have to lose an entire segment? Which segment do I cut? Honestly, it would be the interview. I'll, or maybe the, it'll, it would be the interview or the graveyard shift. But that's something we'll get into later. As for, for now, I'm just going to write all of it. And if the first draft is 130 damn pages, it's going to be 130 damn pages. Um, and then we'll whittle it down. We'll make some hard choices if that's what we have to do. But this was Blind Date. I will see you very soon with a good